I'm going uh, to present uh, a publication that came out uh, in 1988 uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it was Dexamethasone Therapy for Bacterial Meningitis. I'm saying for publication because actually uh, included the results of two different double-blind placebo-controlled trials that they were on this subject. The first study uh, that included infants older than two months of age and children also with suspected or proven meningitis Patients were treated with uh, cefuroxime and dexamethasone or placebo. Following that, another study was performed and the, the microbial agent was ceftriaxone and dexamethasone or placebo. So in both the studies, the regimen of dexamethasone was the same, you can see uh, that it was every six hours given for four days. Totally, 102 patients were treated with dexamethasone. And actually, it was the time before the conjugate vaccine for HIV. And so 77% of the patients were uh, patients of meningitis of Haemophilus influenza type B uh, was the pathogen. Pneumococcal meningitis represented 8.5% of the patients. The key point of the results was the audiologic evaluation uh, at the end of the treatment and actually at six weeks uh, uh, after uh, the, um, the time that they left the hospital. The two red arrows show the main point. With placebo, there were 12 children who needed, in order to communicate hearing aids, so we speak about severe bilateral uh, hearing loss. At the other time, uh, with dexamethasone, it was just one child that needed hearing aids, and that was strongly significant. And you can see, of course, at uh, the bottom that the pathogen was Haemophilus influenza. The other pathogen was a small number. So after this publication, with the two double-blind uh, placebo-controlled trials, uh, there was the initiation of an era, the dexamethasone era, or bacterial meningitis for Haemophilus influenza type B meningitis in children. And there were other centers around the globe that tried again the use of dexamethasone. You can see that this is the most recent analysis presenting the data uh, the Cochrane analysis that showed that severe hearing loss in Haemophilus influenza uh, occurred significantly less when dexamethasone was used. But for Haemophilus influenza, it was the pathogen that it would be uh, feasible to draw a, um, um, 
a decision. However, it was in 2002 that the study for adults with pneumococcal meningitis came out from the Netherlands and showed that for four days dexamethasone used for pneumococcal meningitis it was significantly less mortality in adults. And actually, just a few weeks ago, there is a publication from a prospective nationwide cohort study over a 20-year period from the Netherlands showing with the blue dexamethasone with the red, no use of dexamethasone for pneumococcal meningitis in adults, and again, significant difference, significantly less, reduct, less mortality with pneumococcal meningitis in adults. Where are we now? You can see the current recommendations. ESCMID is recommending dexamethasone treatment, giving dexamethasone at the same time with the initial antibiotic treatment for adults and children with acute bacterial meningitis, but in the setting of high-income countries, and the evaluation was grade A. Dexamethasone has been included in the NICE recommendation. Since 2004 up to today, dexamethasone is included for suspected or proven pneumococcal meningitis and of course, for children. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics recommends for hemophilus influenza meningitis dexamethasone is beneficial to diminish the risk of hearing loss if it is administered before or at the same time with the first dose of antimicrobial agent or agents if it's a combination. If it is pneumococcal meningitis, you can use as adjunctive therapy dexamethasone depending on the physician's decision based on clinical and laboratory findings. So you may consider dexamethasone if you suspect pneumococcal meningitis. These are the recommendations today. Um, I think that it has been proven for adults, but for children there are not so significant result for the improvement of bacterial meningitis when you use the examethasone. But in high-income countries, what we really need is to diagnose bacterial meningitis as soon as possible, have the optimal medical management, and you can have better outcome. But that's for high-income countries. Thank you.